you ever watch Naruto and just think to yourself how much you don't want to be stabbed by shark skin, or any of the swords belonging to the seven swordsmen of the mist, really? Actually, if I'm being honest, I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of any Naruto weapon because I like my internal organs to stay on the inside. But that makes me think, which Naruto weapons are the most powerful? Today's video is all about ranking the most powerful ninja weapons we've seen in Naruto. Did your favorite make the cut? Let's get into it right now. A chakra blade is a pretty straightforward ninja weapon. Put in the simplest terms, it's a type of weapon that a user can flow their chakra into that gives the weapons a little bit of a power boost. I wanted to highlight specifically Asuma Saratobi's chakra blade because, let's be real, it looks painful. His knives are designed in a very particular way, where they have a zigzag shape and a special grip that allows them to be worn like brass knuckles. Like, even without the extra chakra infused, these would be brutal. If you're ever getting into a fight and someone pulls out this type of blade, I'd call the local hospital to have a bed ready for you. Most commonly, Asuma channels wind chakra that makes the blades even sharper and have a longer range. Solid weapon overall, but doesn't have the razzle-dazzle of some of the others on this list. Does anyone else have trouble looking past the fact that Madara is a war fan looks like a big eight? But really, that's my only concern with this awesome weapon. Sometimes you don't need an OP sword or some type of sharp object to do damage. How does that saying go? The best offense is a good defense or something along those lines. Madara knew how to wield this weapon perfectly and could use it to great effect. He could create powerful chakra shields as well as absorb and turn an enemy's chakra attack right back at them. But a shield is much harder to master than you would expect. After Madara died, his apprentice got the shield, but he was clearly not as good as Madara was at using it. Now I really want to see this shield go up against Captain America's Vibranium Shield. Is that too much to ask? You wouldn't normally think of a puppet as a weapon. I mean, unless you own a ventriloquist store and a robber comes in and all you have within reach are creepy puppets to swing like bats, but otherwise, they're pretty harmless. Well, unless you're someone like Sasori who creates human puppets to use as weapons. This isn't your standard weapon, but it's just too gruesome to not include on this list. By removing internal organs and preventing decomposition, Sasori was basically able to make an army of meat puppets that were just packed to the brim with different weapons and even powerful chakra attacks. Why limit yourself to just one weapon? when you can have an unlimited supply. Sure, they aren't as strong as when they were human, but when you have enough human puppets, you make up for the lack of strength. I always love massive swords that are clearly too big for a person's body. That's the case with this entry, which is known as Decapitating Carving Knife, which coincidentally is what I'm naming my firstborn child. This behemoth of a weapon has a long history belonging to the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist and being passed down from generation to generation. It even comes with a handy dandy hole at the end, which makes decapitating people that much easier. So yeah, it really lives up to its name. This was the signature weapon of Zabaza, but let's all take a moment to remember Remember the time Kakashi got his hands on the blade and totally kicked butt with it by channeling some lightning chakra through it, which made it even more powerful. Plus, let's not forget its ability to reform itself after being damaged using the iron taken from the blood of its victims. That's a big selling point. Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage, had a very special set of kunai known as the Flying Thunder God Kunai. Man, that sort of sounds like something Thor should use, right? Is it too late for the Avengers to cross over with Naruto? Hmm, probably. Anyway, these custom-made kunai look a little different than your standard kunai as they have three blades, plus give an added benefit of teleportation. Basically, the fourth Hokage could throw these kunai anywhere and then use those as teleportation locations to jump around and appear in an instant. A true master of this is almost unstoppable. I mean, if any weapon could help you stop a thousand-person invasion, then yeah, that weapon is pretty darn powerful, don't you think? It's probably best this is in the hands of skilled ninjas. I mean, if I had those, i just set one at my fridge, one on my couch, and one in my bed, and then i never have to walk again. If we're talking about OP weapons, we gotta talk about shark skin. I think all of the swords belonging to the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist were impressive and made me want to run away in fear, but the one that sticks out the most has got to be shark skin. It was a very picky sword, with only those who it deemed as worthy could wield it. 
If it didn't like you, you'd find yourself unable to hold it because spikes would shoot out from the handle. And it isn't your average stab and cut sentient sword either. It's made up of scales and it more so flays off flesh, which is just way worse than a normal stab. Sure, it has a downside of constantly consuming the chakra of its wielder, but it makes up for that by also absorbing chakra from an opponent on contact, so that kind of evens out. Let's be real here. Say you're locked in a fierce battle with an opponent. You pull out a massive sword that looks sharp enough to cut through bone like butter. Your opponent pulls out some tiny black balls. You might think you have the advantage, right? Well, not necessarily. These orbs could be truth-seeking balls, and if you're unlucky enough to fight someone who uses these, then let me be the first to RSVP to your funeral. They're just insanely powerful, and you never quite know what you'll get with each one as they all can harness a different basic nature like fire, wind, lightning, earth, water, yin-yang, you get the idea. Besides their destructive power, the truth-seeking balls can also be shaped into a variety of different forms, even forming a protective shell around the user's body. They have the ability to just decimate anything in their path, so that's why they're so high on this list. The best kind of shield is clearly a shield with no set form or properties. Now, I know that sounds a bit counterintuitive, since if you have a shield, you want to know that it can protect you, but trust me, this is way better. That's why the Yata Mirror is one of the most powerful weapons in Naruto. It's an ethereal shield that has the power to alter every single one of its attributes. Why is that important? Well, with that ability, the Yata Mirror can negate any spiritual or physical attack that's thrown its way. How do you beat a weapon that blocks absolutely everything? That's almost too unfair. It's like facing a bad guy in a video game and finding out they're almost impossible to hit or hurt. That definitely hurts on a psychological level, right? Alright, this one is a bit of a cheat since it's a whole collection of weapons, but it's hard to choose just one. The treasured tools of the Sage of Six Paths are all considered some of the most powerful tools in existence, and all five of them have a unique ability. The Banana Palm Fan can generate all five of the basic elemental chakra natures. The Amber Purifying Pot can seal anyone within it if they respond when called by the wielder. And the Golden Canopy Rope, the Crimson Gourd, and the Seven Star Sword all deal with a person's word soul. The only downside to such powerful weapons is that they consume an enormous amount of chakra, so it's not like anyone could use them willy-nilly. A normal human could likely die if they tried to use them, so no matter how shiny that rope looks or how fun that fan looks to wave around, I would advise against touching them. Much like the Yata Mirror, the Sword of Tatsuka doesn't have a physical form. It's sheathed in a sake jar, and it's actually made up of liquid and shapes into any type of blade once it's released. And I wouldn't get hit by the sword if I were you. It's enchanted so that it seals anyone that it pierces. Basically, if you're stabbed by this sword, you're trapped in a world of drunken dreams for all of eternity. If that wasn't OP enough for you, it can also cut through almost anything in an instant. So good luck blocking something like this. Black Zetsu once claimed that when Itachi Susano had both the Sword of Tatsuka and the Yatamir, it made Itachi Susano invincible. I'd love to see all these weapons used against a superhero team like the Avengers. Do you think Earth's Mightiest Heroes would stand a chance against any of the treasured tools of the Sage of Six Paths? It would make for a fascinating fight at least, right? 